welcome back to the channel chemistry made easy i am elizabeth mathieu with an another video lesson on electrochemistry in this video i am going to tell you about fuel cells before get going let's try to understand how is the energy generated in thermal power plants you must have heard about thermal power plants right in thermal power plants fossil fuels are used and these fossil fuels are burned in order to produce in order to boil water okay when these fossil fuels are burned in order to generate in order to boil water it will generate it turns the water turns into steam which is in which is in a very high pressure as soon as this pressurized steam get generated it gets uh, heat on a turbine which is kept in front of it and it turns the turbine the turning of turbine which is a mechanical motion right and this mechanical energy which get converted into electrical energy that is what happening in thermal power plants so in thermal power plants what is happening is that the chemical energy of the fuel which is a fossil fuel which is converted into electrical energy okay but here there are some drawbacks some limitations what are they the efficiency of thermal power plant is very very low it is almost 40 percent and the other problem is that it is not environment friendly it causes it produces so much of environmental pollution so but when we talk about galvanic cell what is galvanic cell galvanic cell is used for producing the electrical energy from chemical reaction so these galvanic cells are doing the same thing as the uh, thermal power plants doing okay so the galvanic cells are used to generate electrical energy here there is no problem of less efficiency here is no problem of environmental pollution this galvanic cell is environment friendly but here also there is a problem what is that in galvanic cell we are using a small tank right the small electrochemical tank which is used for producing electrical energy since the tank is very very small definitely the uh, amount of electrical energy produced will be small we can produce only small scale of electricity okay so that is a problem but if we could design we could modify a galvanic cell in such a way that if you provide a continuous supply of fuel it will produce it will generate electricity continuously if we can provide the continuous supply of fuel we will get electricity continuously that way we can solve the problem so the modified form of that galvanic cell which is actually a fuel cell that means fuel cell is technically a galvanic cell which has the facility of adding the fuel continuously if you add the fuel continuously we will get the electrical energy continuously okay so in fuel cell the common in fuel cell what is happening is that uh, certain fuels are here uh, instead of fossil fuel galvanic cell instead of fossil fuel chemical fuels are used right in thermal power plants we are using fossil fuels it produces so much of environmental pollution but in a galvanic cell we are using a chemical fuel chemical substances right these chemical substances react and it produces electrical energy because the galvanic cell are designed to produce electrical energy from certain types of chemical reaction right then the in galvanic cell the fuels are burned commonly used fuels are maybe hydrogen methane methanol etc but, but the most popular fuel cell is hydrogen oxygen fuel cell here we are provide we are supplying the here we are burning hydrogen in the presence of oxygen combustion of hydrogen takes place here in presence of oxygen so this hydrogen oxygen fuel cell is more popular and it was used in apollo space mission earlier okay for what for producing electrical energy which this uh, hydrogen oxygen fuel cell they were put that hydrogen oxygen fuel cell in uh, in rocket and it continuously generated electrical energy as a result of the chemical reaction and this electrical energy they were used to power the entire rocket 
Moreover, here the reactants are in hydrogen oxygen fuel cell, the reactants are hydrogen and oxygen, right? This hydrogen and oxygen reacts together to form water. Water will be the product. And this water is in very high, highly purified water and they use this water for drinking purpose. Okay, so the same fuel cell in Apollo space mission, they use the same fuel cell for two purposes. First one for generating electrical energy and the second one is to produce water, pure water that were used for drinking, uh, that, that were used for drinking purpose. Okay, how fantastic it was. So these are the advantages, these are the importance of fuel, uh, fuel cells. Here we are also going to discuss hydrogen oxygen fuel cell, its construction, its working, etc. Okay, let's see uh, what is hydrogen oxygen fuel cell made up of. This hydrogen oxygen fuel cell contains a tank and two electrodes are placed in this tank. One of the electrode is anode and the other electrode is cathode. And this anode and this these two are two electrodes. And these electrodes are made up of porous graphite or carbon ore. And it is incorporated and they have a little bit of platinum or palladium in it. What is the purpose of this platinum or palladium? Since platinum, palladium, etc. are inert metals, like right? But this platinum, palladium, etc. Here, what is the role of this metal? These acts as the catalyst. Okay, here we are using two electrodes. One of the electrode is anode and the other electrode is cathode. Okay, so here also the oxidation occurs at the anode and the reduction occurs at the cathode. In this uh, tank, we are passing uh, hydrogen gas through one side of this tank and oxygen gas through the another side of the tank. Or we can say that hydrogen gas is continuously bubbled through anode and oxygen gas is bubbled through cathode. Since this anode and the cathode are porous graphite ro rod, so this gas can easily enter into that electrode since it is porous. Okay, and the chemical reaction occurs in its surface. Right? Then, let's see what is happening and what is the electrode reaction which occurs at anode. Here, the anode is hydrogen gas. Always oxidation reaction occurs at anode. So, what is the electrolyte used here? The electrolyte is a concentrated solution of sodium hydroxide, concentrated solution of alkali, which is used as the electrolyte. Concentrated aqueous solution of alkali is used as the electrolyte. Here, hydrogen gas is bubbled through this side and oxygen gas through that side. So, what is happening at anode? The hydrogen reacted at anode and oxygen reacted at cathode. So, let's see. What is the chemical reaction which occurs at anode and at the cathode? Since anode is graphite rod, through that anode we are passing hydrogen gas and through cathode we are passing oxygen gas. Always oxidation occurs at anode. So let's see what is the electrode reaction at anode. So at anode hydrogen gas is there. This hydrogen gas if you, if you take two molecules of hydrogen gas, this hydrogen gas get oxidized in presence of OH minus ion. Four OH minus ion, which is available in this electrolyte. What is electrolytic solution? Here the electrolyte used is aqueous solution of sodium hydroxide, right? Aqueous solution of sodium hydroxide means what? The sodium hydroxide is dissolved. That solution is prepared by dissolving the sodium hydroxide into water, right? So that electrolytic solution now contains the uh, ions of water also. So OH minus ion is there. Similarly, NaOH, which get dissociate to form Na plus and OH minus. Water also dissociate to form H plus and OH minus. So there are enough OH minus ions are there, okay? So, at anode, this hydrogen gas get oxidized in presence of this 4 OH minus. What happens? Oxidation means loss of electron. Here, oxidation occurs at this hydrogen. If one hydrogen atom loses one electron, it becomes 1 H plus. Here, we have 4 hydrogen atoms. These 4 hydrogen atoms loses 4 electrons, then it becomes 4 H plus. Right? So, it loses 4 electrons and that 2H2 become 4H plus. Then that 4H plus plus 4OH minus gives what? 4H2O. Right? 
Here the oxidation occurs at anode. Here at anode we have hydrogen gas. And this hydrogen gas loses electron. Here we are taking two uh, hydrogen molecule. Two hydrogen molecule means four hydrogen atoms. These four hydrogen atoms loses four electron producing four H+. And that four H+, combines with this four OH-, we will get four H2O. Is it clear? This is a chemical reaction which occurs at anode. Then what is the chemical reaction at a cathode? At a cathode. We can write, here oxygen gas is bubbled through cathode. So oxygen gas is there and H2O molecule which is available in this electrolyte O2 plus 2H2O at a cathode always reduction occurs. Reduction means addition of electron. Here four electrons are released at anode and these four electrons accepted by the particles which is present at a cathode and we will get the product is 4OH minus. How will you obtain this 4OH minus as the product? I will show it tricky mother. If you have one OH group, that one OH, if it gain one electron, it produces one OH minus, right? If one OH group gain one electron, it will, it will become one OH minus. But this OH itself, it has no existence. But just suppose if you have four OH groups, if these four OH group can accept four electron, then it will become one four OH minus, right? Suppose we have four OH group, one OH, two OH, three OH, and fourth OH is there. This four OH group, which is equal and two, see here, this is one water molecule, this is another water molecule, right? H2O, H2O, okay. Uh, this instead of this 4 OH, we can write two molecules of H2O plus O2. So 2 H2O plus O2 is equivalent to 4 OH. If this 4 OH accepts 4 electron, what will be the product? It will become 4 OH minus. Right? This is just a tricky tricky method to memorize. Okay. So O2 plus 2 H2O plus 4 electron gives 4 OH minus. This is a chemical reaction which occurs at cathode in a fuel cell. Then we can write the net cell reaction. We can write the net cell reaction by adding the electron reaction which occurs at the anode and at the cathode. So we can cancel. For writing the net cell reaction, you just cancel, cancel out the common terms which are present in the left hand side of the equation and in the right hand side of the equation. So here we can cancel. This 4 OH minus ion which is present in the left hand side, here 4 OH minus ion is in the right hand side. So this 4 OH minus and 4 OH minus get cancelled. Then here 4 electron is in the left hand side, here also 4 electron in the right hand side. This 4 electron, 4 electron get cancelled, right? Then in this equation 2 H2O which is present in the left hand side of the equation, here 4 H2O is present in the right hand side of the equation. This 2 H2O, out of this 4 H2O, 2 H2O's get cancelled. So what remains? 2 H2 which is there plus here 1 oxygen atom, we are left with 1 oxygen atom. Then in the right hand side you just see this 2 H2O, out of this 4 H2O, 2 H2O is already cancelled. So 2 H2O is there. So, 2 H2 plus O2 gives 2 H2O. This is the net cell reaction which occurs at fuel cell, which occurs in fuel cell. So, the product of the chemical reaction is the formation of water. And this water, this is highly pure water. This water is in the form of steam. If you condense that water, you will get the pure water which can be used for drinking purpose, even drinking purpose. And this was... Earlier, this was used in Apollo space mission. So, this same fuel cell, hydrogen oxide fuel cell was used in Apollo space mission for two purposes. First one, the best use is for producing electrical energy which power the entire rocket. And the second one is, it is it, this water, the product, this water is, uh, since it is highly pure, they will use this for drinking purpose. That's all about the fuel cell. You find it helpful. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.